This short video about hens shows details of their lives and capacities. We see how they recover after being removed from intensive conditions known as the battery system. And we also see the realities of free-range farming, often presented as a much more humane form of animal use. What you are about to see is a system of use that is standard throughout most of the world. In Ireland, for example, the vast majority of hens are confined in dark sheds, in cages just like these. Taken out of cages by behavioural scientists for non-invasive experiments, such as tests on the range and sensitivity of eyesight, we can see the poor conditions of the battery hens. They have lost their feathers. Their combs are floppy. And many develop deformed feet. The scientists believe that these birds can perceive a wider range of colours than we can. In fact, birds have the most complex colour vision of any animal. Scientists say that birds see colours differently. Like this. Similarly, they are very sensitive to ultraviolet light and may see patterns that we can't, like this. After release, the birds eventually improve. Their muscles and bones strengthen after being weakened by cage confinement. One experiment involves them running an obstacle course. Scientists find that the hens will pay a considerable price in negotiating the course in order to do what they can never do in battery cages, build a nest. The battery hens have learned to run an obstacle course which demonstrates a range of learned responses. They must peck a key to release a catch, squeeze through a small space, tightrope across a thin pole, Peck a wire loop three times to instruct a computer to release a door. Take the right turn at a T-junction and leap over water, all in order to reach a box where they can make a nest to lay their eggs. Turning our attention away from the fortunate hens released from cages and to the issue of more humane conditions, what is the reality behind comforting words such as free-range farming? If we see the label free-range on an egg box, do we really know what that may mean? These hens arriving at an animal sanctuary are from a free-range farm. All of these hens have been debeaked with no anaesthetic, a painful procedure that involves cutting through bone, cartilage and soft tissue. All of them arrived with calcium deficient bones and severe feather loss, which left their bodies covered with bruises and abrasions. All of them were depleted and debilitated by the unnaturally high rate of egg production and repeated cycles of forced molting, periods of up to 18 days when they had been intentionally starved to shock their bodies into another laying cycle. All of them came from hatcheries where all of their brothers had been killed in infancy simply because as males they could not lay eggs. At 18 months of age, a fraction of a chicken's lifespan, these hens were considered spent, unable to produce eggs at a fast enough rate. They were scheduled for slaughter. All 100 of them bore the physical and psychological scars of an entire life spent in the crowded confines of a sunless, windowless, ammonia-filled shed. Their carers say that, even after weeks of sanctuary life, many were still in a constant state of terror, still panicking at the drop of the leaf, still carrying at the smallest noise as though hit by a physical blow to the body. Some coped by huddling and staying close together. Others tried to cope by making themselves invisible, trying to hide and escape the perceived danger as best they can, squeezing themselves into the nearest, smallest nook, even if the space is barely large enough to mask their faces. Some, like this young hen, 
arrived completely defeated. She had given up. She just stood motionless in the same spot for hours, unable or unwilling to eat or drink, but still laying eggs, even when she barely had enough energy to sustain her own life. According to the Animal Sanctuary volunteers, some still display stereotypical neurotic behaviours, such as head bobbing and compulsive feather pecking, or air pecking. Pecking at unseen imaginary targets for hours, the vestiges of the deprived environment they endured since infancy. Others, they suggest, are still too depressed and withdrawn to venture out, even after weeks of free life and genuine care. They keep themselves tucked in an out-of-the-way corner, watching the world outdoors from the inside of a barn. These are the faces of free-range farming. There is no such thing as humane farming on any scale. The film we have been watching demonstrates the inherent problems in systems of animal use. From an animal welfare point of view, both the battery and free-range systems have their problems. In the animal rights view, all use is unacceptable. Wherever there is animal use, we find abuse. And wherever there is animal use, there are rights violations.